imagine the life of musicians on the road as being very exciting, very glamorous. But in reality, it's a lot of hard work. And being away from home 300 days of the year really isn't easy. So joining us now is folk pop performer Corby Linker. And he's on tour right now, not playing music in music clubs. Rather, he's hitting the bookstores. His book, Medium Hero, is 27 short stories inspired by his life as a traveling musician with a cat. A guy with a cat. A guy with a cat who's a musician who is, what, on a bus? It's already a good story. It's an awesome story. Yeah, I have two questions for you before we get started. What's up with your name? How'd you get Corby? And what's up with your hair? I think that is really, you got, you got up a with? hairdo awesome. like a musician. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Uh, do you style it yourself? I do. Now I'm a little self-conscious. I put enough hairspray in it. Was it too much? But obviously it's working. That's so. fantastic. <laughs> My husband right now is watching going, that's the hair I want. He's always mm -hmm. asking me for a perm. Yours is probably natural, right? It's going Garfunkel-y, though. It's like it used to be a little bit less, and now it's, I'm just going to let it go. garfunkel it. Go it. I go like that. It. And how about Corby? Go you know what? I've asked my parents so many times. Like, yeah. There's got to be a story there. I can't get a good answer. Really? They're not hippies. You know, they're like yeah. nice, corn-fed <laughs> Idaho people. You're from Idaho? That's where I grew up. Okay. All right, so how did you become a musician? Well, I was just, I always wanted to do it. And in high mm -hmm. school, I had a really great experience with a band that I was in that made me like sort of popular for one night <laughs> at my high school. And I was and like, was I, ne I never looked back. <laughs> I was like, this is what I want to do. It feels it changes good. lives. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Everybody, every girl likes a guy who can play an instrument, that's for sure. So what, <laughs> when it comes to the book Medium Hero, um, I love the description that this is made up of short stories that some you actually have experienced and some you just made up. And is how what's the ratio there? Well, I <laughs> that's a good really question. I don't really know the ratio. I would just say that when I wrote them, I wanted people to not really know which were which. Okay. Some of the stories I think that feel or seem the truest are ones that I completely made up and really? other ones that seem very unlikely are almost verbatim. Mm -hmm. So I think that it doesn't really matter what happened and what didn't. They're all true in their way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How much of what you wrote did you draw from your experience being on the road as a musician? Because it does seem like a glamorous, fun, like, you know, you have chicks all the time kind of lifestyle, <laughs> you know? Uh, it's fun at times. And sometimes, you know, you're waking up in another crummy hotel room by yourself in Flagstaff, Arizona, and you don't know anybody, you know, that's the, the, the things you forget about. Right. But um, being on the road and tra traveling by myself a lot, mm -hmm. it, when you're by yourself, you have more opportunities to just kind of, I don't know, find trouble, mm -hmm. I yeah. guess. And so I've had a lot of, you know, weird experiences and met a lot of fringy type of people. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, I thought, well, I'll write this story out. And then I posted it on Facebook and it got a good response. And then I kept doing it. And like six years later, I had maybe 60 stories. So I, I picked like 20 of them and I self-published this book. Mm -hmm. And I just would sell it at the shows. I had no real uh, game plan to get it published. Mm -hmm. And I played a show in Nashville last February. And after the show, this woman came up to me and she was like, you said you had a book or something? And so she gave me her card that said she was the acquisitions manager at this publishing company. And you know, people have been handing me their business cards for 10 years. I don't take it that seriously. And like two weeks later, she sent me this email. She was like, hey, I just want you to know I love your book and we're at the company really excited about it. And can we have a meeting? And a couple of weeks later, we had this meeting at a dive bar in East Nashville around the corner from my house. There were deal points. There was an advance. I'm oh like, my this gosh. is very real. I like this. That's crazy. And this must really yield a nice opportunity for you. Being a performer, oftentimes you're on stage, you know, there's the audience, but you're actually getting to meet people when you go to a book signing and you and people are coming to you and saying, I love your book. I read your book. It's They're getting to know you reading the pages in a way. Now you get to know them. Yeah, it's so much more interactive. That's what mm -hmm. I love about it is that, you know, usually like tonight at Boswell, I'll play a couple of songs and then um, read a story and then be like, anybody have any questions? And somebody will ask something and then there's, just, there's kind of more of an exchange and it's lively and it's fun. Do you ever see yourself completely giving up, say, um, songwriting, um, being a singer-songwriter for writing as an author full-time? Full Do you ever see yourself giving up the music part? Um, I don't think I'll ever give it up, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely in a phase right now where I'm trying to stay home more because I I'm really want to be a novelist. That's what I've always wanted to do since I was very small. Since the and not be a mortician like <laughs> your dad? Your dad's a mortician, right? It's true. Yeah. Did you spend a lot of time in funeral homes? Yeah, it's so weird. Like when I was growing up as a kid, one of my like salient memories was like being really impatient in the embalming room, waiting for dad to finish up because no there was way. A, there was KFC in the car and we were going to walk across the street to the city park and have a picnic. 
And I was just like, get done so we can have fried chicken, in Dad. In the embalming room. <laughs> Isn't that's that the so phrase wild? That pays and that, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is what. Do you, do you look at death differently than, than people who haven't seen that, do I you think? Mate, I, I imagine it probably made an impression. As a kid, it was just so common. You know, it was just Not like, scary? That's what, it wasn't Not scary. Not scary. It wasn't uh -huh. scary. My dad didn't make any point of, like, hiding it from us. It was just, like, a thing that happens to people. Mm -hmm. And so I was close to it, and I kind of took it for granted. I don't know. I'm still sort of processing that. Yeah, I do have made, made a mark. Yeah, deep That's, thoughts with Corby Linker. Yeah, and on a first date, I would think you'd have a lot of interesting things to say. <laughs> I try to stay away from the uh, mortician <laughs> and death <laughs> subjects on the first date. That's kind of a second date it's like thing. A third date, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is awesome. Well, tonight um, you mentioned a book signing. It's great that you're going to also do a little bit of your music too. It's super fun. It's tonight at seven o'clock at Boswell Book Company, which is located on Downer. CorbyLenker.com is the website to go to, and you're going to stick around too for our man panel coming I'm, up in a little bit. I'm on the panel. Because we, we described your relationship status as complicated, mm. which I think, can't wait to find out <laughs> more about that. Just kidding. So stick around. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Molly. The book signing sounds like a lot of fun tonight, too. Thanks so much.